Hello, I'm Matthew Malcolm with California Dairy Magazine, reporting to you from the Golden State Dairy Management Conference held in Stockton by the UC Cooperative Extension. One of the presenters today was Ed DePeters from Animal Science Department at UC Davis, who gave a presentation on colostrum. He went into great depth of what it all really is and how it works. So today we talked about uh, colostrum. And with colostrum, uh, colostrum is important for the life of the calf. So it has an impact for the first two to three months. So with colostrum, when we think about colostrum, it's the very first milk, and it's high in immunoglobulins, so it's high in antibodies, protein. And those antibodies protect the calf for the first two to three months of life as its own active immune system develops. In cows, there's not a good placental transfer of immunoglobulins from the cow to the calf in utero. So the calf has to get those antibodies from the colostrum. Humans, humans have a good transfer. So from a mother to a baby, there's a good transfer in utero, but not with cows. So we have to get colostrum into the calf. And there are many factors we consider. We consider the timing. You know, the sooner we get the colostrum into the calf, consuming it, the better the absorption because a physiological effect occurs called gut closure. And gut closure means the small intestine of the calf no longer absorbs whole protein. So those whole proteins, those immunoglobulins, have to be absorbed as intact proteins. If they're not absorbed as intact proteins, they don't have the functions in the body to protect the calf from pathogens. So the timing is important. We try to get colostrum into the calf within six hours of birth. So we get it in within six hours of birth, we wind up getting a passive transfer and we protect the calves. The concentration of immunoglobulins in the colostrum is important. So we want to feed, you know, 50 grams per liter or higher. We want high quality colostrum, high quality meaning high in immunoglobulins, but also low in bacteria. So how we handle the colostrum from the cow when we collect it, you know, we should process it quickly. We shouldn't set it and let it warm up to room temperature or above because what will happen is the bacteria will grow. So we don't want bacterial growth because that affects quality. And we think about immunoglobulins as quality, but bacteria quality as well. And so we, we have the factor of how much to get in and how much also determines your volume. So the volume you feed, whether you feed two liters or four liters, that's really dependent on the concentration of the immunoglobulins in the colostrum. You know, if you want to get 100 to 150 grams of IgG on that first meal that the calf gets, well, the colostrum concentration of IgG and the volume have to be considered. So typically dairy producers feed two to four liters and you try to feed it within six hours. And that gives you that systemic effect. But today we also talked about some of the local effect. There are some things in colostrum that we don't understand all of it, but there are things in colostrum that protect the calf from a local perspective. And one thing I mentioned was some of the little structures. They could be proteins, they could be other structures that are in colostrum. And what they do is they prevent the pathogenic bacteria from adhering or colonizing the small intestine. So when you get a scours, typically what happens is the pathogenic bacteria, which normally have these fimbriae or papillae on their outer membrane, that allows them to attach to the intestinal lining. Well, colostrum has these protective little structures in there that either bind the papillae or they bind the receptors on the small intestine and they prevent those pathogenic those bacteria that are gonna cause disease, cause scours, prevents them from adhering, and they just get washed out into the feces. So today we talked about the systemic effect, that's absorbing the immunoglobulins whole, and that protects the calf for two to three months of life, because its active immune system is developing. It's born with a very immature immune system on the active immune system side, and it develops over two to three months, and that passive transfer of Ig protects it. But then there's also a local effect. And that local effect is preventing the pathogenic bacteria from colonizing. So I always call colostrum nature's wonder because it's a way of protecting the calf until its own active immune system can take on the challenges of the pathogens in the environment. Well, thank you, Ed. Read more about uh, starting your calves out right in California Dairy Magazine. I'm Matthew Malcolm, CaliforniaAgnet.com.